case 10 is the last of your tumor cases for this set. This is a 61 year old man with uh, left sided numbness, weakness, and slurred speech. Here you see some images from an MR of the brain. These are pre and post contrast images through the same region. Here's your diffusion images through the same area. This is diffusion, DWI, this is ADC. Here you see sagittal pre and post contrast images through that same lesion. So here you see the abnormality here and here. These are the last images. So what is the most likely diagnosis? And for patients presenting with glioblastoma, which genotype has the best prognosis? So you need to try to decide like is IDH wild type a good prognostic factor or a negative prognostic factor? And then the same thing for MGMT methylation. So which combination of those two have the best prognosis? Uh, so this is a solitary enhancing parenchymal mass. So in this case, you've got a solitary nodule in the right uh, kind of frontoparietal region or posterior frontal lobe. When you have that, you have to be thinking about a specific differential diagnosis. Uh, you want to include GBM. So glioblastoma is probably going to be one of your first thoughts, particularly in an older patient. Metastatic disease is definitely a major consideration. Lymphoma, while it's more typical to have multifocal disease or involvement of the subependymal surfaces and basal ganglia, lymphoma can definitely present with a single solitary nodule. Abscess, you should be able to differentiate based on diffusion. So if you've got a centrally abnormal diffusion, that's much more common to be an abscess. Infection as well, like it should uh, should be kind of similar. Some other infections, uh, cystocercosis or toxoplasmosis, may not have abnormal diffusion, so uh, you can have some unusual infections. Uh, this one happens to be a glioblastoma. So these used to be called glioblastoma multiforme, but that's been renamed, and they're simply called uh, glioblastomas. These are the grade four astrocytomas. They have very poor survival of around 15 to 18 months. The edema that you see around them on T2 and flare is a combination of tumor and vasogenic edema. And that's why they have such poor survival is because even if you resect the enhancing component, you're not getting all of the tumor that spreads into the surrounding tissue. Now these are characterized by a centrally enhancing lesion. Uh, they tend to have reduced diffusion in areas that are cellular, although not as bright as an abscess. You can definitely see areas of hemorrhage and you may see flow voids. Now the treatment is maximal resection of the enhancing component and then radiation to the residual. That's typically done by uh, giving 60 gray to the uh, tumor bed and 30 fractions, and then giving that concurrent with uh, temozolomide. Uh, then imaging will be done for a follow-up about every three months or so. So here you see this is a T2 flare and gradient image. You see there's some hemorrhage uh, centrally within this lesion, some surrounding edema, and it's kind of centrally iso, uh, iso intense to a little hypo intense on T2. Now here you see pre and post. You have this very irregular pattern of enhancement here. It's not solid. It doesn't seem to have a regular margin. When you see those, those are some features that might think you, make you think of glioblastoma over metastatic disease. Here you see the diffusion. You do see on the ADC particularly, there's kind of this dark rim. On the DWI itself, it's like centrally very dark. That's because of the susceptibility effect from some hemorrhage centrally within this lesion. Uh, on the sagittal, you just get an, another idea of like how heterogeneous and multilobular this lesion is. You see it's not completely enhancing back there. You have central necrosis. This is kind of big for a metastasis to be detected, and uh, this kind of multilobular appearance is a little bit more common for GBM. So you might favor that, although metastasis would definitely be in your differential. Now, glioblastoma genetics, uh, if you have IDH mutation, those are associated with lower grade tumors and tend to have a better prognosis. If you have that in a higher grade tumor, it's thought to have arisen in a low grade tumor, so a secondary GBM. Uh, MGMT methylation also gives you a better prognosis. Uh, this is a DNA repair enzyme. If it's methylated, you can't respond to your radiation or you can't, uh, your cells can't recover from radiation as well. Uh, so these patients do better with radiation and temozolomide and they tend to get more pseudoprogression. And this is a graph simply showing you the survival curves. If you have both of these, so if you have IDH mutation and MGMT methylation, you have a much better survival curve than having one of the two or, or neither. Uh, so it's better for you to have uh, both of those. So in this case, you want to be IDH mutated and MGMT methylated, which makes D your answer here.